How's it going? So I've had the Camp Chef gridiron here for about four months and I've done about 30 cooks on here and this will be my full review of it. A little bit of housekeeping before I start. I don't work for Camp Chef. I just have a YouTube channel all about griddling, but they did send me this for free. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, there's no obligation. I don't have to say nice things. They said I can be honest um, and I will be honest about it. But I also did own the Camp Chef Flat Top Grill 600, which was their like model before this. And that's what I shot my first 200 videos on. Um, that might have been why they sent it for free. I don't know. But uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm probably a little biased. They sent me a hat. <laughs> I can easily be bought for a hat, but anyways, but uh, no. So just want to be full disclosure that I did get it for free, but this is my honest review um, of it. Also, as far as griddles, like I said, I've had the FTG 600, which is the model before this. I've had this one. I had a two burner Blackstone and I cooked at a previous job at a grill shop I worked at on the lay griddle, which is uh, a stainless steel griddle with a cast iron plate underneath it. So those are the four main griddles I've cooked on. I've cooked on four burner Blackstones as well a couple times. So um, I've used them. I haven't used every griddle. So I got, that's why I'm saying this is like, I don't, I don't know. If you want to know like, how does this compare to the Weber Slate or the Traeger Flat Rock? I, I don't know. Um, I haven't used them all. I can't afford to buy them all and try them. If people want to send me more free griddles, I'll take them. Don't tell my wife, but I will take them. Um, so just, you know, letting you know up front that I, I can't, might not be able to answer all your questions. So we'll start off with the only uh, kind of con, and I don't know if it's a full con, this is just my experience from the FTG 600 and from this one. The pre-seasoning doesn't seem to hold up as well as I would like. Um, and I even put another coat on each one and they're fine. They just start to get a little discoloration, which happens with all griddles. I mean, it happens with all of them. This isn't a reason to not buy it. It's just from my experience, the pre-seasoning doesn't seem to hold up as well because then with my previous one, I stripped it down, re-seasoned it, and that round of seasoning seemed to have hold, held up better um, than this one. So that's just kind of, I'm not saying it's a reason to not buy it. I just, I. From my experience, I think seasoning yourself is better, but I still, even with this one, it's doing fine, it's working great, and probably next spring, I'll strip it down and just re-season it myself. You just do it with a wire wheel. Okay, so for the pros and kind of to go through this fair, fairly, I don't know, I figured I would just read off their website and kind of give my opinion on what their pitches are for it, and then at the end, go over some things that I don't think they mentioned that I do really like. So first up, the Gridiron 36 stands out with its thoughtful design tailored for everyday chefs. Engineered for consistency, this griddle delivers even heating that promises a well-cooked meal from corner to corner. No more dodging cold spots or chasing heat. Um, so yeah, it is even all the way across. So was the FTG 600. I didn't have tons of problems with that. The leg griddle that I worked at uh, my old previous job, that was very even as well. And it was like four grand. Um, but it wasn't more even than this for the price point. And then same thing with the four burner Blackstones. They've all been pretty similar to me. I haven't had huge issues with like hot and cold spots. It's just, they're there. It's part of using a residential griddle. I mean, they're never, the most even one are when I worked in diners and kitchens for 20 years, like nothing compares to those because those are commercial griddles that are lots and lots of money and they're inside. So. Um, it is even, I haven't had problems with other ones. The only ones that I find are the most uneven, um, was my two burner, which makes sense though, because it's only two burners and the corners, it was just hard for the corners. They really, you know, got, they didn't stay as uh, hot as the middle. Next up, the thoughtful placement of the grease trough ensures cleanup is less of a hassle, meaning you can transition from cooking and serving to relaxing without the usual cleanup conundrum. Um, so the grease trough is right in the middle here. Let me give you a little look at that. See it right there? Ta-da! Um, in Blackstone's, a lot of times it's on the very back. Uh, and the Camp Chef Flat Top Grill 600 I had before this, it was up here in the front. Um, so I do like the grease trough. Um, as far as like, does it make cleanup easier? Um, not really that much easier. Um, it's pretty convenient as you're going along. I do think it's better than the previous version where it was up in front. I'll definitely say that. Is it better than being in the back? 
Uh, I don't know. That's a preference thing. I don't, I don't really care. I don't know if it's better than being the back the trough is. Um, I will say down here, what it goes into is a lot larger. Ta-da! That's a pretty big bucket. That's a lot nicer than the last one and nicer than the Blackstone ones where they're in the back. It's a really, really big container and you can get foil liners that go in here, which all the griddles have that, but that I like better um, than necessarily the location. It's just, it's a lot easier. But one thing I do like about the trough that they don't really mention is the front area here. Let me show you. So um, right here, you can see where this line is. It, it doesn't like really get heat as much. So it's just residual heat. So everything's cooking back here. And then I can put like my bacon or buns or something if they get done early or sausage up here and it, um, it'll keep it warm. I used to use a little wire rack a lot for this. And I still use this little wire rack a lot. I still have it. Um, but this area kind of works as a replacement for that. So I really do like that. So I do like that part of the grease trough, the big bottom, the little front area to keep warm, to hold bacon or potatoes, anything that gets done, but you want to try to get off the heat. You can also just turn a burner off to get stuff off the heat and cook on the residual heat or hold hot on the residual heat. But this is nice and it, it catches a lot more and with the last one with the front little trough, it could like flow over. And some of the old Blackstones have that where like bacon grease or if you're doing a bunch of hamburgers are really greasy, can flow over. So this does catch it and I do like that better. Okay, next it says it's perfect for a family breakfast of pancakes and eggs or an evening cookout featuring burgers and cheesesteaks. Yeah, it is. That's just part of a normal spiel of a griddle. Um, they have six features listed on their website as well. Let me pull those up for you. Um, so the first one is grease management it says cleaning is easier than ever with the new oversized grease trough and grease bucket. I kind of went over that already. I agree with that one. That is a good feature. It does make it a little easier. It does hold more and it prevents spilling. Grease disposal. The hidden grease bucket is more visually appealing, accessible and safer than the other options on the market. Um, <clears throat> kind of the same thing, I guess, but I guess I would agree with that. It is more visually appealing and accessible. It's not more accessible, safer. It's kind of hidden. I would say it's the same too. Um, so yeah, I would just say it's bigger. It's bigger is the bonus there. I don't know about all the other things they said. Uh, griddle leveling. Stop fighting the sloped griddle. Our griddle leveling screws allow you to level your griddle as you cook. Yes, they do. So it's in the back here. You can take like an Allen wrench and uh, you can lift it back up or lift it down. Let me show you. It's right here. Do, 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 do. And then there's one on the other side. And yeah, I mean, that's basically it. You turn it and the griddle can go up or, or lower. And so you can angle it towards the grease trough or you can like angle it back and put a bunch of oil in the back. So that's kind of nice. Flamethrower ignition is the next one. The flamethrower ignition provides the easiest and most reliable ignition for your flat top grill. I didn't have a ton of problems with the one before this. I don't really have any problems. Occasionally with this one I do when it's windy. I have had problems with Blackstones. I had problems with my two burner. I mean, it's not terrible. In my opinion, it's always just been like kind of part of having a grill or a griddle. They don't always, they don't always light. So um, I don't think it was a big problem before for me. It's still not a big problem now. I, I, that is a big selling point for them, but I don't, I don't think it's a big issue and uh, you can always light these things if you need to. It just might take a couple tries to get it cranked on there or they have right here um, the little holes so you can stick it in for manual ignition. You can light a long match and stick it in there. So there's always an option to light it. So I don't, the flamethrower is big. It works. I don't know if that's a selling point for me, but it works. Folding shelves. Large shelves offer massive workspace when you need it and fold down when you don't. So these side shelves fold down. Take this off here. This one kind of hits the, uh, the uh, propane tank. The other one does it. Um, yeah, the folding shelves work. I don't know what else to say about that. Um, if your griddle doesn't have shelves that fold, I don't know if it's the end of the world, but I would, I do prefer the ones that do. My last one folded down. Um, these ones fold down. There's black stones that don't. So I don't know if that's a deal breaker for people. 
guess it depends on your space that you have out back. Um, but you know, it's fine. It's nice. I don't know if that's something that makes me buy it over other things. Magnetic accessory system. Snap on your favorite accessories with the new magnetic accessory system. This is nice. Okay. So you saw me already pull off this, which is like the bottle holder and I'll show you over here. And it can just like snap on here because it's magnetic. Ta-da! And then, for example, you can get these little hooks here. They're also magnetic. And they'll snap on right there as well. And then you can just start hanging stuff, utensils and whatnot on there. There's also a uh, paper towel holder. I'll show you that. So the magnetic um, accessory holders I do think are very nice. Um, it's You can hang accessories multiple ways on other ones, but I think it's really nice to just keep buying those and have a holder for your paper towels and for your squirt bottles. And everybody tries to do this on all the different griddles. So it's not like groundbreaking, but I do think it's nice. And they're on the front side and the back. So you can even put your squirt bottles or your paper towels on the back of that shelf if you want to. So it's a nice option to have. So I do think that is a nice problem. Those are the six things they put us for the specs of this thing. Um, I'll put the those below in the description. I don't really go over them. Basically, I can say it's as big as my last one. It's as big as every four burner griddle I've used. That's fine. And it gets plenty hot, plenty hot, over 500 to cook a smash burger or sear steak. And it also can get low to do eggs or omelets. Pros that I don't think they really mention. Um, it comes with a lid. -da -da! And this hooks onto the back and you can go up and down with it. Um, Mine is not on there because I shoot all these videos and I want to get a camera behind it pointing down, but it is very nice that it comes with a lid. Um, not all griddles come with lids. This is $500 at the making of this video. A lot of griddles at this price point and lower may not come with lids. When you get higher, they do usually come with lids. I think you need, you need a, a hard cover. You need a hard lid on each one. So if you're looking at something that's a little cheaper, but it doesn't have a hard lid or hard cover, you're probably gonna end up buying one anyways because you don't want these things out in the elements getting wet um, and like a little orange rubber mat isn't gonna be enough you want a hard lid to be on top of it so I think that's a very nice pro that they don't mention for the price point um, a lot of them do come with lids though I just you sh you want a lid it has four wheels that lock on casters down here so you can roll it um, the last one did it there it goes the last one did it, the FTG 600 just had two wheels. A lot of black suns have two wheels, some have four. So again, this isn't a groundbreaking feature, but I think it's nice. It's nice to have four wheels to move around and then to lock them into place if need be. Uh, another feature they didn't mention is with this front trough here, you can see there's little notches here and that can hold your spatula. And I do that quite often, I'll put that there. So that's a nice thing to go ahead and hold your spatula in there. Um, and you can even close the lid if you want. Um, they did say, I think I read somewhere, if you close the lid, you can only keep it closed for like four to five minutes. So you're not like fully, it's not like a grill. You can't keep it closed for a long, long time, but you can melt some cheese under there, which is, you know, good. And finally, what I think is the best feature of this griddle that they did not really harp on at all in any of their marketing material or on the website, um, is that low is actually low. So when you put it on low, you'll stay around 300 to 325, medium low, um, which is where I like to be for doing eggs and omelets, toasting bread, um, it's great. On the FTG 600, low for 10 minutes, you'd already be up to 450. On a lot of Blackstones, low for 10 minutes, you're, you're up to 450. So, um, which is way too hot to be doing eggs and stuff. So then you gotta use water to like kind of cool it down and try to figure out how to do your eggs or turn a burner off and leave the two outside burners around it on. So that, you know, that's all hard. I think honestly, my favorite thing about this is that low is low and you can get down to the temperatures you want if you're doing breakfast like eggs and omelets, but it still gets above 500. It still gets plenty hot enough to do sear steak, smash burgers, Maybe you want to do some chicken that high too, sear a piece of chicken. So it fluctuates. And I, I honestly think that's the best feature of this griddle um, compared to most other griddles I've used. Overall, I do like it. Um, would I buy it? Like, yeah, I would, but I already bought their previous griddle. Um, if I was going against the previous one versus this one, this one's better because it has the lid and it actually is low. You can actually get the low. Oh, there's the train. Great. 
Um, so, but uh, I don't even know if the FTG 600, it's hard to find. I don't know if they're still selling that. So that point is moot, I guess. But okay, overall, you can, uh, I, I think it's a good griddle. I think it's worth it. If you're in that price range of five to 600 bucks, you're probably looking at this or a Blackstone or maybe the Weber Slate or something like that. But um, it's definitely a good griddle. And I, I would definitely have no problem buying it for the price point of $500. If you are looking, and you're probably looking at a bunch of griddles, I'll link a video from a place called the Barbecue Lab. They reviewed like six griddles. I mean, like I said, way more than I'll ever do. Um, and they did a heck of a test. They're insanely thorough. So it's a really good griddle review video. And I think, you know, that would be a good place to start if you're trying to see what's best for you. If you want more videos about recipes and tips and tricks and just overall griddle cooking subscribe to my channel and uh, that's what it's all about i'm johnny thanks so much for watching hopefully this was helpful for you